Welcome to Clyde House Medically Speaking. Each month, we'll explore a variety of topics to help you better understand certain medical conditions and treatment options. My guest today is Dr. Steven Schweitzberg, the Director of Surgical Programs at Collida Health. Today, we'll be discussing the parathyroid and recent studies regarding treatment of parathyroidectomy. I'm Mike Hughes, and this is Medically Speaking. Dr. Schweitzberg, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, we're here to t today to talk about the parathyroid and some recent studies suggesting treatment uh, with those who are suffering from um, that type of ailment. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, a lot of people don't know about their parathyroids. They, they know about their thyroid, sure. but they don't know that right behind the thyroid are four little glands that control your calcium. And controlling your calcium is really important because with poor calcium control, you can lose a lot of calcium out of your bones and make your bones very brittle. These little glands have gotten a lot of attention lately because for reasons that are unclear, parathyroid disease is becoming more common. Maybe it's the same amount and we're just getting better at diagnosing it, but certainly the amount of parathyroid treatment is going up in the United States for sure. Is there any connection to those with thyroid disease and then those with parathyroid disease or is it, is it separate and distinct? Completely separate. We operate on people who have normal thyroids or abnormal thyroids. It has no bearing on their parathyroid. And so you mentioned that there's four glands and if someone does have an issue or um, it's, impa it's impacted, is it all four? Is it two? Is it one? Well, the disease comes in two separate flavors. The most common is one gland disease. We call that adenoma. The other three glands are normal and one gland has gotten very large. A normal gland might be this, somewhere between the size of a grain of rice and an eraser head, but a large parathyroid adenoma could be the size of a grape. We take out glands that are sometimes 100 times the normal size. That's sure. the most common, that's nine out of 10. The other kind is what we call hyperplasia. And in that case, all four glands are affected and it's associated with other types of diseases. There are some genetic diseases that affect the parathyroids, adrenals, pituitary, pancreas, sure. but that's only one out of 10. Sure. I think most part people would understand what some thyroid issues are, what are some of the common um, uh, detection to find out you know, if you do have some thyroid issues, but parathyroid, how do I know if they have some issues or what are some common themes for people that may come to you that have those um, um, issues? Many people don't even realize that they have the disease. They, the most common way it's diagnosed is one of, of two kinds. The, the most obvious time when you know that you might have a problem is if you have kidney stones. And most urologists are very careful. If they find a patient with a kidney stone, sure. they check the patient's calcium levels, they check what kinds of stones they are, and then they'll order a parathyroid hormone test. So those patients, they have symptoms and they're thrilled to be uh, diagnosed and treated because it can re reduce or eliminate the risk for kidney stones. That test is done by a blood test? It's done by a blood test. Calcium detection is a blood test. The other way that happens is when you go to your doctor and you get a routine blood screen and they give you a whole list of those labs. Sure. Well, one of them is often calcium. And that calcium, if it's elevated, um, is a signal that people may need more investigation. Is there an age range where you see this in terms of a typical patient? Um, is it you know a senior citizen type ailment? Do you see it in you know those um, who are younger population? Most commonly, it's women. Women have a threefold incidence of this disease compared to men, and most commonly, it's in the age range of presentation between uh, fifty and sixty. Although occasionally, younger patients do come in. And those are the exceptions to the rule. In terms of it being a female dominated issue, is that just, just genetics or is there certain makeup or is it hormonal? Nobody knows, it, it could be hormonal, but those differences between men and women exist whether you're white, African-American or Asian, three, three to one dominance in sure, women. Sure, sure. You, you mentioned it before, your calcium levels, um, maybe that's 
it's it may be a, a bit overlooked. Why is that so important for one's overall health and um, you know the importance of uh, good bone health as well? Well, calcium is such an integral part of our bones and our teeth. If we lose calcium, if if we lose calcium, our bones become brittle. It increases our fracture risk. So your doctor may order what we call a DEXA test. And the DEXA test looks at bone density and it comes up with a score. You're no, not likely to have broken bones. You're twice as likely, you're three times as likely. And it looks at the different bones and so you get a picture of, of risk. So the way it works is that if the parathyroid is enlarged, it is a tumor. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, sure. they're almost never cancer. Okay. It's, it just, it's just never cancer. It's Does rare. It, it exists. Rare. People shouldn't be worried about cancer. So they make this excess hormone and the hormone hits the bones and the bones release calcium. Now this calcium goes into your bloodstream sure. and it's the job of your kidneys to filter your blood. All that calcium is now in the kidney. Right. Now, if you've got a lot of calcium in your urine, it gets urinated out. So we check your urine calcium. Mm -hmm. But if you've got all that calcium in the urine under certain circumstances, that's what crystallizes the stones. That's agenda for the kidney stones. And, and so that's what it happens. Now, women in general are at risk for osteoporosis. So this is a double whammy. So it's important to make this diagnosis in anybody, but particularly women. If, if you do have that type of diagnosis, um, and, and we'll talk about the procedure itself in a minute, but um, is there a way to get your calcium levels regulated and, and back normal? And then even if there has been some sort of brittle bone or weakening of the bones, can that be strengthened? Yeah, so the first thing to do is identify the problem. Some people have high calcium, it's not from parathyroid disease. There are some medications, so those people who are on what we call thiazide diuretics, the most common of which is hydrochlorothiazide, that medication should be stopped. Some people are just taking a lot of calcium supplements, that should be stopped. Some people are deficient in vitamin D, that should be brought up. There are some other diseases, some unusual diseases for people with sarcoidosis, and some people just have some abnormal calcium metabolism. So first you need a diagnosis. If it is hyperparathyroidism and we do treat it, then one of the post-operative treatments is to give you calcium, to push some calcium back in the bone. So Just in a short period of time that, that well, calcium we, Yeah, we give it for several months and okay. some people stay on it even longer. So patient goes to the primary care doc, they're not feeling well or they have some issues. Primary care doc suggests blood tests. They realize there's calcium level issues, referred into a physician like you. Um, it looks like there has to be a surgical procedure. Um, when people hear surgery, they may get nervous. They may not be ready for something like that. May not even want to do it. Um, walk me through what the surgical procedure is like and what a patient could expect should surgical intervention be needed. So when the patients come, the first thing we do is make sure that they're completely evaluated. We do everything we can to make sure which of those four locations for the parathyroid has the tumor. It's really useful to know where we're going first. In the old days, we just explored everything. Sure. We made a big incision, we looked on both sides of the neck. Today, most patients, not everybody, but most patients can be imaged. And the reason for that is twofold. The nerves to the vocal cords run right by the parathyroids. And if you could avoid exploring where there's no disease, right. then you minimize risk. The second is that if we know which the target is, we can do minimally invasive parathyroidectomy. And we know when we go to the operating room, it's gonna be on the left side on the lower one. We get out an ultrasound machine while the patient is sleeping. We mark X marks the spot and we can do it through an incision about that big, about 80% of the time. Sometimes we have to make it a little bigger, but we can do it minimally invasively most of the time. And it's really under the skin surgery. So I sometimes operate on Monday, see the patients back on Wednesday, two days later to check their blood and some of them have been back to work already. It's not a really morbid operation for the vast majority of patients. And, and a lot of that can be attributed to the advancements in medicine. So the, the better imaging gives you a better target. The less invasive gives you, you know, quicker recovery. Um, the smaller scar 
maybe help out a little bit more psych- psychologically in terms of you know not worrying about having you know such a big incision. So how much has the advancement in medicine helped with that? Well, I've been doing the surgery for 25 years and we started with big incisions and big flaps. And a lot of people, when we surveyed them later, they wore a lot of makeup, they wore scarves. But today with the incisions that are that small, a lot of people, it doesn't even look like you've had an operation for those people that we can do it minimally invasively. Other pieces of technology that we employ at Collide Health is we measure the parathyroid hormone in the operating room. So we measure it that morning. We know that your hormone level is say 150, which is high. We do the surgery, we wait 10 minutes, we draw your blood again, and we have a special machine that gives us an answer pretty quickly. So I know before most patients have been woken up whether they're cured or not. Now, the reason why this is important is nobody wants an operation, nobody wants two operations. So we can predict cure with about a 95% accuracy because remember, nine out of 10 is one gland, right. one out of 10 is multiple glands, sure. and even worse, one out of 100 is two glands. Sure. So we uh, measure the blood, and if the blood counts don't come down, if the high levels are still there, then we know to keep exploring so that we can try to make a perfect operation every time. So what may seem as a challenging diagnosis for patients, especially the female population, um, because of the advancements in medicine, because of some of the the techniques and some of, the, some of the things that you're doing at Buffalo General, um, it's not as invasive, it's not as difficult. So not to say that um, you're optimistic, but it's a lot better today than it was say five, 10 years ago. Oh, absolutely. And our understanding of how the disease works allows us to intervene much earlier in the course of the disease. Now, the reason why that's important is less bone density loss. So if we operate earlier when the tumor is smaller and the bones have not become as brittle, that's a real plus. Gotcha. So a final question as we wrap up for those who may be watching, if someone has questions or seeking treatment options uh, about the parathyroid, you know, how can they get help? Well, there's three choices. They can talk to their primary care physician always. They can seek out an endocrinologist who specializes in diseases of the glands or they can come visit a surgical endocrinologist like we have at Buffalo General, myself and my partners. This is a really important disease. We're learning that untreated hyperparathyroidism increases the risk for premature death. The Society of Endocrine Surgeons have put this on their website to educate patients. And so we really want to make sure that all patients with parathyroid disease have access to good information. Great. Well, thanks for your insight on this important topic. Congratulations on all the success that you're having at Buffalo General with the surgical program. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Mike Hughes. Thanks for joining us on Medically Speaking. We'll see you next time.